Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. We are the Couples Business School, and tonight we're talking about what we need to do to be successful in our businesses. My name is Asani. I'm Danielle Pettiford, and this is Married to the Business. That's right. Woo! This is this show right here. Um, I'm elated about because many of you know, um, all of you that know us know that Hassani and I have been in business together for oh, 15 years because literally our relationships over 15 years because our relationship started on the basis of business and then he married me and I always mm-hmm. joke and say I really believe he married me for the hookup. Because I was a graphic designer, a marketing expert, and of course it just made sense, you know, marry it into the business. This was this has always been done, right? So he really lucked out, but I lucked out too. And we want to talk. How did to you, you luck out? Can oh, we talk about that? For because a minute? you're brilliant, you are, have impact. You're a powerful man. You're a leader. You're out awesome, and you're really good looking. Wow. Me and the girls, me and my daughters were um, actually watching a Marco Polo with uh, their dad. And we were all just saying, he is so handsome. Really? Were, yeah, yeah. Savannah and Madison was like, oh, wow. he's so handsome, but we would like you. To, they want you to grow a beard. They want you to go back, grow back some more of the hair. They like you more bushy and hairy. Well, yeah. that's another conversation for another time. <laughs> but listen, we're glad to have you guys. Now, as you know, uh, this is new. We're doing the Couples Academy Daily Show. And just to give you a quick rundown for those that are just joining us uh, for the first time, on Sunday nights we have what is called relationship Q&As. That's where you can ask any question that you want, whether you're dating and committed courtship, engaged or married, you can ask your question to find a solution to the problem that you've been struggling with. Then on Monday, I am alone. And so I do something called uh, infidelity recovery. So I am an infidelity recovery specialist. And there's so many people who have been impacted by the pain of an affair and don't know what to do. Should they stay? Should they go? They're vacillating back and forth. They're just looking for solutions and for help. And so we provide great content to really help you uh, through your struggle to overcome to get to the other side. And then, of course, on Tuesdays, we have Married to the Business. That's when Danielle and I come together and we talk about our experiences and wisdom uh, that we've read, uh, awesome information that will really help you propel. One thing I've noticed is that there's a new trend and the trend is people are starting, couples are starting to work together. Yeah. I'm seeing so many personalities on Facebook and social media of couples who are just doing things together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and it's really important that couples who are working together get special attention because it's a whole other level. Hassani is an infidelity recovery specialist, and he started out working with couples. He's been doing this since I met him. And I'm a brand and marketing specialist, and I run advertisements for six- and seven-figure business owners. And so together we struggle with actually figuring out how to be married and actually have a decent relationship, stay in love, like yeah. each other, balance out raising our families, and just nurturing a home for ourselves. Yeah. And I think it's really important that couples who work together in business really get special training as opposed to going out there and trying to assimilate to people that just aren't doing what they're doing. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. And that's why we do this every single Tuesday. And then Wednesday, we have uh, V-Life. That's where Danielle, and Danielle, tell me about V-Life. V-Life is where I'm gonna talk to you guys just about how to identify your virtues, how to find out who you are, what you desire, and really unearth all the treasures that are deep down within. A lot of us walk around serving other people 90% of the time. That's what we do as women. All we do is give, give, give. And oftentimes, we forget about us. We don't even know what we like anymore. So it's going to be a time where we share, where we discuss real issues and where we really figure out what it is that we want to do so that we can show up even better than we're already showing up now. And then on Thursdays, we have a new segment called How They Do It. And so we're interviewing couples, couples who are in ministry, couples who are in business, couples who just have awesome relationships. And, you know, oftentimes we can learn from the experiences of others. Wisdom says that we can learn from other people's experiences so that we don't have to make the same mistakes that they've made. So we uh, basically short-circuit our learning curve. And so it's going to be awesome. We're having couples from all backgrounds, all languages, all parts of the world. We have people from Europe and from Africa and from Latin America and the Caribbean who we're going to be interviewing. So it's going to be uh, really interesting to find out how culture, how geographical location, how language, how all of these things play into the success that people experience in their relationships. But tonight, tonight's topic, we're actually pulling it from a phenomenal book 
that we encourage you to get. The name of this book is called Sleeping with Your Business Partner. Uh, now, this is uh, a good thing yeah. when you're sleeping with your business partner because your business partner... You better hope you're sleeping together. That's, that's one of the things you have to make sure still happens. Exactly. If you have time. We're going to show you how to make the time. You better have time. If you have time. Good God from Zion. <laughs> and so we're talking about the top 10 essentials for successful copreneurs. You know, a lot of people have an interest in having their own business and working with a partner, but they may not know the, the first thing it takes to really be successful. There are fundamentals, there are keys, there are foundational principles that you need to be successful. And we're going to go with them. I'll go through these, all 10 of them quickly, and just expound on it a little bit. But for those who, once again, don't have the book, Sleeping With Your Business Partner. The best uh, book ever. And the author is Becky Stewart Gross and Michael J. Gross, mm -hmm. a married couple. Number one, it says your business activities must be in some way compatible with your marriage and family life. Mm. I think that also, uh, that kind of speaks to work-life balance a little bit. Yeah. Like your relationship, your business should not impede on your family and on your marriage. Yeah. I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, I know several people who have businesses where, guess what, they do a lot of traveling. And so they're always on their own. Now, I must say that I travel a lot, right? You travel a lot. And so you've got to make sure that that type of lifestyle works for your marriage and for your family. How do you do that? I think it's about being on one accord with your partner. Now, there's a different, like, I know a lot of people who literally will leave on Monday, come back on Thursday, and they spend the weekend together. But they built their family life and their marriage life around that work environment. And so it works. Now, the challenge is when you have someone who has, let's just say, a nine to five mentality, they have a great job, right, in corporate America or whatever the case may be, and they're used to coming home every single night at 5 o'clock and resting and spending time with their partner, but their other, their, their partner is the one who's constantly on the road. So that can cause a major problem if you have two different philosophies yeah. on what marriage uh, work life should be like. I agree, and for the longest time, Hassan and I had two different philosophies. His philosophy was, I don't understand boundaries, <laughs> and my philosophy was like, we need boundaries. And I think a lot of times women are the ones that are kind of the nurturers of the home. And we're the ones that enforce that we need balance. We need more time of you, dad. And I don't think it matters if you are an entrepreneur or not. Honestly, um, you can be a workaholic with a nine to five job. And, you know, every time you come home, you're you're burned out, you're exhausted. And the family still doesn't get to spend time with you. As a father. And I mean, and vice versa, because nowadays women are doing it too. The women are working nine to five jobs and they're high level executives and they're burnt out at the end of the day. And they don't have much more to give. And I think it's really important to set structure and balance. For us, that means saying no sometimes. Yes. You know, um, with the book, mm. The Audacity of Marriage, that just came out, it's really calling Hassan and I both out and abroad. I, like I said, I run an ad agency, okay? So my business is hunkering down at a computer and getting results that way. It's different for me to have to pick up and go and speak somewhere. I can do this all day long. But this last time, actually, I said, you know what? I, like, I, we just got back off the road. There's all this traveling that we're doing all the time. Um, and, and at this point, we don't have the support that we need to have somebody there whenever we need somebody. And I had to say no. Stevana yeah. says she read the book, The Audacity of Marriage. Yeah. Uh, oh, actually, she said she needs the book. So get, get the, the book. book. Go get to Amazon.com right now and get that book, yeah, girl. It's available. It's a phenomenal book. What you were saying? No, I just think it's important that we sometimes be okay with saying no. Like, I felt like, oh, my God, if I say no, am I totally ruining this great opportunity? It was a huge opportunity for you to speak in London at one of the biggest churches in London. And I kind of feared for a minute that my, maybe my saying no would cause him to lose this opportunity. But any time for me, the, the way my belief is that any time I am stepping, I am making a step that's in alignment with my first ministry, which is my family, everything else is going to work itself out. Yes. So the boundary for me is saying no. Mm. And you know what? Sometimes. Whatever you say yes to, you have to protect it with a whole bunch of no's. Now, that's something to think about. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, top 10 essentials. As a couple, you must have a healthy, mature, marital relationship. Now, one of my favorite shows is called The Prophet. If you've never seen The Prophet, I highly recommend you watch it. It comes on NBC. Uh, you can also watch it probably on demand. And it talks about, it really explores how people uh, struggle in their business. And really, when The Prophet you know, goes in and kind of reworks people's businesses to get them back on track. 
he discovers that the reason why so many people go through in their business is because they're going through in their relationship. So true. So we're talking about husband and wife. We're talking about parent child. We're talking about siblings. Whatever the relationship is, best friends coming together and forming a partnership. Yeah. If you are not in a good relational space with whoever you're doing business with, it will have a tremendous impact, wow. a negative impact on your business. That is so true because when we were going through the worst, we were making no money together. <laughs> we couldn't get on one accord. We couldn't We agree. couldn't stand each other. We couldn't stand each other. We were going in one direction and going in the other. And guess what? A lot of the clients that you see with your practice yeah. have that same issue because you support a lot of couples who are in business together. Mm -hmm. And everything is falling apart yeah. because not only is their relationship falling apart, their family with the children, but their finances, which is everything. Everything. Whoa. So could you imagine if you are going through issues with your partner and you've gone three days without communicating, but yet you're supposed to show up for work every single day. You're dealing yeah. with clients. You're dealing with patients. You're dealing with uh, employees. You have to make business decisions, but you're not talking. Right. So if you're not talking at home, most likely you're avoiding each other at work. Yes. And then bills are accumulating. Customer service is going down. Everything's impacted. So whenever there's an issue in the business, the first thing I'm going to know is what's going on in the relationship. Yes. So I would take the time to really invest in your relationship and make things right so your business begins to thrive. Yes. Number three. There must be effective communication between you and your spouse. Wow. I tell you, the number one issue that most couples struggle with is how to effectively communicate. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at the bottom line, you're looking at the finances, you're looking at, I don't know, reports that need to come in, you're looking at uh, quality, uh, control, customer service, whatever the case may be, a lot of times... Those are just the manifestations of the real problem. Right. The real problem is an inability to effectively communicate about what's really going on. And, and it's also beliefs, you know, like belief systems. Like, you know, there are couples that are actually in business that don't feel like they need to expose what they're doing financially, which is a huge problem. If, huge. You, if you have a business together and somebody is supposed to be watching the bottom line, but there is a hole mm -hmm. in the boat sinking you, and you can't get on one accord, your business is going to tank. I mean, it's everything else, too, because when you're in business together, you also have to figure out a way to manage family and schedules and things like that. So if you're not really um, to, on the same page mm -hmm. with your communication, everything falls apart. That's why we put schedules in place, which has saved us tremendously. Schedules for everything, washing dishes, laundry, when the kids get picked up, what day we go here, what day we go there. All of these things have to be scheduled so that everybody is on one accord. That is communication. Boom. Number four, you need to clearly define your roles. Now, I can't tell you how important that is. Now, just think about driving in a car. Now, I'm driving. My wife's two in the Stay in your lane! <laughs> Cars all swerving issue. into yes, the other yes, lane. Yeah. It's just like, stay in your I lane. I don't swerve. I'm a good driver. Hassani swerves can, all. Oh, oh Can I'm we sorry. rebuke that demonic <laughs> spirit right now? Because. So it's so important. What he's saying is so important because, you know, especially when you know your, your personalities, the different personalities. You know, Hassani is a very creative person. He's a very he's very talented and can do a lot of things. I gotta he's give great. one. I, I gotta give props to my man. Yes. Dave Paulius, we went to college together. Okay. He's saying good stuff. Hi, this Dave. is my brother. I love you, man. We're gonna connect. Keep him going. Yes. Well, I was gonna say that the swerver here, the one that goes all in everybody's lane, he is Don't multi talented, which means he can do a lot of things. But guess what? As the visionary, you can't do a lot of things. You have to be a visionary and stay in your lane. And he is so blessed to have a wonderful graphic artist and designer and marketer as myself who can take you anywhere you need to go as I drive in my lane. And that's the importance of team, yeah. which we learned, right? Yeah. We brought on a team that was able to do things that we were not able to do. And we were able to multiply and triple our work or, right. our, or the work that we got done. Absolutely. Let's go to the next one. Number five, at least one of you needs to be self-motivated and ambitious. This is important because energy and momentum drives the movement of an organization. So if not both of you, one of you needs to be motivated. Yes. Motivated means waking up at the crack of dawn. Thank you, Kim. I know it's true. Staying up all <laughs> hours of the night. Yes. 
you know, going out, finding customers, always reading, having a thirst for research, connecting with people, just doing anything that drives the business. Yeah. You know what? Not to say that every ounce of your day should be consumed with work and business, but you've it, it's got to be. It's, you've got to be almost. Uh, how could I say? It? You've got to be intoxicated with what it is you want to do. Yeah. If it's if if you're not absorbed in this thing, if you're not eating it and sleeping it and doodling it and all types of things, then you're not serious about your business. Now, some people can say, you know what? Time's up. I'm out. I'll yeah. see you later. Do what you got to do in the dungeon. Yeah. I'll see you later. But somebody's got to be the one that's constantly pushing, if not both. Mm -hmm. Because in terms of entrepreneurship, it, 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 being successful, there's a, there's a saying, if you don't work, you don't eat. That's a lie. That may apply to a job, but in business, if you don't close a deal, right. you don't need. You can right. do all the work you want. You could be working from sun up to sundown, right. and if you don't close any deals, then there's no money, so and guess what? You don't need. So, so you've got to drive that business, and it's important that you have that. I agree, and, and I do have to say that I think also it depends on your family, too, because see, in our, in our relationship, Hassani is the driver. This one works 24 hours seven days a week, and we both do at times, but there's someone on the ground, someone who's there for the family, someone that's making sure everything still continues to go in yes. order while one person is grinding all the time, and even he needs to take a break. But you may not be in a situation where you have a family to attend to, and you might be able to hustle 24-7. I mean, there are some people that literally grind and they don't take breaks because they're that passionate about the work that they're doing that it feels like it doesn't feel like work. It's right. their passion. So they can put all those hours in and get a lot farther. When I go to business conferences, it really astounds me what people who don't have, you know, smaller kids that slow them down can accomplish in a month because they just hunker down and get it done. You know, Kim said passion. That's the word that you just used. And mm -hmm. you're absolutely right, Kim. Uh, Dave said compound effect. And that's yes. so, 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 so true. These are the right words, and these are the type of things that you need to have in your business if you're going to be successful. All right, let's go to the next one. This is so good, I'm sweating like a slave over here. All right, so the next one says, number six, each partner must bring significant value to the business. Mm -hmm. Now, let's pause here. Yeah. The reason why this is so important is if you both aren't equally bringing something to the table of value, there's no use or need for you. Mm. And so what you're doing, just think about a three-legged chair or a three-legged table if two of those legs are weak legs and all of the weight is leaning on one leg or let's just say two legs for the sake of a couple and one leg is weak and everything's leaning on that other leg then it's overdue pressure overdue stress on one particular person and they feel like they're carrying the load of the business now that's going to create bitterness it's going to it's going to create resentment and there's going to be a whole lot of internal conflict. And so we talked about how it only takes one person in a relationship to have the passion. However, there's got to be what we will call competence. Mm -hmm. What is your area of competence to really allow that business to excel? So, for instance, what do you bring to the table? Many of us are wearing hats that we're not necessarily competent True. in. Because as entrepreneurs, we have to do so many things that we may not have the experience or the skill for. But what is your skill? Mm -hmm. It takes more than passion. You've got to be able to be able to do something. Absolutely. I agree, Hassani. And I think about how we even have had to outsource things. Because, listen, I mean, I used to be able to hunker down and build websites all week. <clears throat> but I don't have the time to do that. So we have to outsource. And that's where the team building comes in. Absolutely. That's so important. All right. Let's go to the next one. Uh, number seven. At least one of you needs to pay attention to the bottom line. Yeah. Now, we kind of talked about that earlier. Yes. It's important to pay attention to the financials. Yeah. You know, one thing I've learned listening to or watching Shark Tank and watching The Profit and many of the shows that really deal with business, most people are unclear on their numbers. They don't know what their expenses are. They don't know what their profit is. They don't know what their loss is. If you look at their accounting, it is a wreck. Some people have drawers and drawers of receipts that they haven't filed. They have no clue. And then when you dig into the paperwork and dig into the numbers, you realize that they're in debt by tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars owing vendors. And so it may look to the outside world that they're a profitable company, but they're really not because they're not paying attention to the bottom line. Right. So even if that is not your particular trade, there should be some level of knowledge and skill that you have in basic accounting in order for the, the company to thrive. I agree. Or you hire somebody that knows more than you. I mean, there are a lot of small companies out there 
that supports small business owners where you can pay a small monthly fee and your taxes can be in order, your, all the money that comes in is tracked, you can get coaching. There's a lot of companies out there that support small business owners at this point. Yep, very good. Thanks, Jason. I appreciate you. He says blessings better for us. Hey, Jason. Jason and his uh, wonderful wife. They're from uh, they're from London, and we love them so much. If you guys like what you're hearing, give us some love. I want to see some hearts go up, some thumbs up, thumbs go up, some smiles, some laughs. laughs. The next one, number eight. Each partner must create a healthy blend balance of work, family, and personal time. Now, we talked about the importance of a calendar, right? So the color-coded calendar allows you to time block. When you're time blocking on your calendar, it means that you're taking out a section or sliver of time for yourself. Now, let yeah. me tell you something. I'm married. We've been married for going on 15 years. But we both need our own personal time. We need time to rest, to relax, to do things that we like to do, to hook up with our friends, to just be free to be us. You know, in the very beginning of our relationship, Danielle had a craving to leave all the time. Not all the time. Let me not say it. It's wow. not all the time. But she had a craving to leave because she was just like, you know what? I'm a mother. I'm a wife 24 hours a day. I just need time for me. Leave, 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 leave. Let's clarify that. To leave meaning to take a break. Yes. To get away, to spend time with me. And actually, it took me years to figure out that that is actually something that I need to be able to be 100% for my family. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know why I would get so bogged down and stressed and pressured. But then I realized I needed to get away and regenerate. That's what he means by leave. Because <laughs> it could sound like I was leaving you. Oh, no, no, no. And if you don't take the time to go on your own personal retreat, then at some point you're just going to want to retreat from the relationship. So That's it's true. important to have that time for yourself. And then after you've uh, had time for yourself, you want to have time for you and your spouse, right? That's that couple time. Then you want to have time for you as a family with the kids. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the time, you know, typically is with work or with church or with whatever extracurricular activities you're participating in. Yeah. But if you've time blocked your life, then nobody feels like they're getting the short end of the stick. Yes. Because you've come up with a system that works for all members of that family. Absolutely. And I, I have to say this because the kids, oftentimes they get left behind. I see it all the time. And they need to feel important. They need to feel like a priority. So we set aside family time. They know that that is their time when we're going to do everything that they, well, not everything they want to do, right. but things with them. That's right. Jason said even Jesus needed time wow. uh, for solitude. That's and right. that's true. Even God, when he was creating the heavens and the earth, he, rested. he took a day of rest. Y'all better get some rest in the schedule right now. Come on, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number nine. We're almost there. As a couple in business together, you must be able to deal effectively with change and stress. Let me tell you something. When you're growing a business, it is so hot in here, but when you're growing a business, it's important that you learn that you have to be adaptable. You have to adapt to change. And as you're developing that, that business from the ground up, there's going to be a multitude of changes that you're going to have to go through. You're bringing in new software, new technology. Yeah. You have to take on new skills. You're really figuring out what team members are right for your business because though somebody looks good on paper and they sound good in a resume, after that 90-day probationary period when they're working with you, you may realize that they're not a good fit. So you may have to what? Get rid of them and hire somebody else. Maybe wherever your workspace is, you're constantly changing furniture around and bringing new things in. And change is just, and for those people who don't like change, listen, this may change. not be the thing for you. You love to, yeah. She loves to change sometimes to a fault. <laughs> okay. But it's important that you learn to be adaptable. Yes. Adaptability is the key to your success. Absolutely. All right. Now, the last Savannah one. says, yes, retreats are awesome. Wink. Yes, they are. And we're on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Number 10. As a family business, you must be able to resolve conflict effectively. Let me tell you something. The reality is conflict is inevitable. You can't avoid that there will be conflict in your life, in your marriage, in your business. I don't think it was ever promised that, you know, once you get saved and you become a believer, that there are not going to be any problems. You're not going to have any conflict. The key is how well are you at resolving the conflict? When it comes, what is your appetite? What is your temperament like? What is your skill set and level of competency of really dealing with problems or opposition or struggle and overcoming them. And so that's why it's important that 
you really practice what we call marital negotiation. And marital negotiation is something that can also work in your business. So let's just say uh, there's a situation where you and your partner are differing on something. There's conflict. Well, it can either be my way to her, to, to her demise, her way to my demise. But guess what? If I win, she loses. If she wins, I lose. Whoever wins individually, as a couple, you both lose. So the, re the reality is you have to learn how to overcome these issues together by negotiating and figuring out what is mutually beneficial for this particular issue to be resolved and for the business to thrive. And I think that's so important because couples just don't know how to overcome conflict. Not only do they not know how to overcome conflict in their relationship, it stems into their business. Yeah, I just think that overall couples don't have endurance anymore. It's sort of like <clears throat> if it's not working out, we just call it quits. Unfortunately, it's not so. It's not that easy for couples that are in business. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just so much more at stake that we kind of have to put in the effort, uh, extra effort. And what I want is to be happy in the midst of that. I don't want to uh, be married and miserable just because I'm married to the business and this is my livelihood. Right. So you got to be willing to work through those issues so that you can actually have some balance and happiness. Right. And I think it's important that you do that. And so that those were the top ten essentials for successful co-founders. So if you're on the verge of starting a business, I want you to be mindful that it takes more than just passion, it takes skill, it takes more than just skill, it takes great negotiating abilities with your partner, it takes having a vision, it takes staying in your lane, mm -hmm. it takes having an area of competency, it takes a defining roles in that particular relationship yeah. and the business for it to work. And when you have all of these building blocks, all of a sudden, things begin to work yes, out. Yes, I just want to say hey to Van Vanetta Candy Walker. You know Candy. Of course. Hey, yeah, Candy. Yeah. Hey, I'm glad you guys are listening. I want to acknowledge Gabrielle. She says, I learned a discussion is to determine what is right, but an argument is to prove who is right. So true. Very true. And then Danielle says, we try to stay focused on what's right and not who's right. It's easier said than done. That's real talk. So listen, we want you to continue to tune in every single Tuesday as we deal with critical issues yes. for copreneurs who are trying to be successful in their business and their ministry. Yes. Listen, if you have any questions about what we're talking about, feel free to inbox us so that we have great content for you as the weeks come. We want to let you know that we love you and we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys.